Okay, are you on? Everyone, please. So we have been reflecting on the mantra from Gadaranya Kopanishad. Asatoma Sadgamaya. First day we did day before yesterday. Yesterday we did on Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya. And today our satsang is on Mrityorma Amritam Gamaya. So Mrityu, death. From there, Mrityor, Ma. Ma means Ma, me. Ma here does not mean no. So, cause me to move from mortality to immortality. Vityorma Amritam Gangaya. So, from death to freedom, immortality. The prayer is to Bhagavan to help us to move. Why help us to move? Because right now we are identified with this which is perishable, which is changing every moment. So, Mrityorma Amritam Gamaya from the Vedantic standpoint means that we move from mortality to immortality. But before we go there, before we even realize that, Mrityu has many other connotations. So when we live in tamas, that is Mrityu, death of our potential. Yesterday we saw about that Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya, in that we also saw that how Tamoguna and Rajoguna keep us in bondage. And so one says from, from Tamas, please take us to Jyoti, that is light, from darkness to light. So death is not necessarily only the physical death. Somewhere I read beautifully, it said that, you know, natural resources get depleted when we use them. But human resources get depleted when we don't use them. So much of human resources, mind, energies, potentials, talents, doesn't get expressed at all. <laughs> That's the greatest wastage that happens. Now one famous story, one Favorite story of mine, Ramakrishna Paramahamsa used to say. And you know, this story comes before all the other stories are there in this book called Tales and Parables of Sri Ramakrishna. This small anecdote is there that there was a village, and in that village, there are lots of people who live there farmers, skills, skilled people, businessmen, different types of people live there. And they have a tradition that in the evening they do satsang or some cultural program or some dance. Some performance will be there after dinner is over. They will all come together. So one evening there was supposed to be a play, a skit. So this farmer, he came back home. He took a bath. He did his sandhya, puja, whatever he had to do. And then he had his dinner. Now, the performance happens in the open area. There's a stage there. So everybody comes and, you know, spread out their mat, etc. So this farmer, he rolled the mat, tugged it below his arms, and he walked up, reached the place, and he found that he has reached some 30 minutes before. Nobody had come. Even those people who are preparing, who are the actors, they have also not yet come there. So he said, okay, let me have a quick nap. So he spread his mat, went to sleep. When he woke up, what happened? Play was over. Again, he rolled up his mat, tucked it below his arms and he came back. Simple story, but what does it tell us? What is the learning we can take from this? Uh, 
Some people say, okay, don't reach the place early. <laughs> don't carry a mat. Don't carry a mat. <laughs> don't go to sleep. See, the point is, the drama of life, everything happens, it unfolds, and what is it that we are doing? We are asleep. Full life gone. See, in that, at least he was sleeping. Here, we are awake. We are doing all activities, we are achieving things also and we may be, you know, full day busy and doing many things, running from here to there and this Mumbai city is supposed to be a city that never sleeps. Everybody is so active, dynamic, but doing what? Full life passes sometimes without knowing why am I doing this, what am I here for? Those who walk in sleep, you know, what are they called? Somnambulists. We all are somnambulists. Doing all our work asleep. So the Upanishad says, Uttishthata, Jagrata, Prapyavaram, Nibodhata. Arise, awake. Go to the teachers and learn this knowledge. Gaining which one realizes, I am not this perishable entity at all. So many times one doesn't know what his whole life meant for. And that fundamental clarity when we don't have, don't we see so many challenges are happening because of the lack of that fundamental clarity. So many people get disappointed with challenges and disappointments that come in their life. They get dejected completely and then they want to end their life or they get into drugs, into depression or alcohol or any of that. So why that happens? Because the big picture of life is not clear. How to discover my Swadharma? What is my Swarupa Dharma? Who am I truly? All that is not known. And so death, first aspect of death is that, that even though we may be living every moment, if we are not clear that why we are here, then we are as good as dead. Second, when we don't have energy and enthusiasm, to grab opportunities that life brings, then we are dead. Gurudev used to say that, you know, so there was a joke, nice joke. So one person said, has opportunity ever knocked your doors? He asked his friend. So the friend said, yes, but you know, ever, but uh, I was sleeping at that time. So ever since opportunity is sending his daughter to me. <laughs> what? Who is the daughter of missed opportunity? <laughs> missed opportunity's daughter is who? Misfortune. M I S F O R T U N E. Misfortune. If we are awake to receive the opportunity, then also misfortune will attend to us. That will be M S dot fortune. It's up to us. If opportunities knock our door, we are awake, we get miss fortune. If opportunities knock, we are asleep, then we get misfortune. <laughs> so we are sleeping most of the time. Opportunities knock, asleep. Then later on we realize, Are I should have done this, I should have done that. So many people, they don't live their life with energy, enthusiasm. You ask young people, how are you? Huh? Surviving. <laughs> What's up? Nothing. Young people, 12-year-old fellow, he's saying that day life sucks. 12-year-old, what is, what does he know? Have, what, how much has he seen life to say that life sucks? <laughs> but that is what is happening today. So, energy, enthusiasm, for what? Swamiji, we are very energetic and enthusiastic for enjoyment. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong, one can be. You think about it, five days of Deepavali, what should our energy and enthusiasm be? But today is New Year, no? for many people it is New Year, Bali Pratipada it is today. When will a year become new? When we change, when we do something new, then the year becomes new. When we resolve something or we evolve, 
we take a new sankalpa, we start something new, we make some change in our thought process, then it becomes new. Otherwise, same old person is living. Do you know, psychology says every day, 55% of the thoughts that we think are the same. No freshness. That is death only. Innovation, creativity, energy, enthusiasm to learn something. How many people have learned anything new consciously? Learning can never have a particular age limit. One can keep learning whole life. So did I learn anything new? Did any new skill I cultivate? Did I do any, any sadhana, new sadhanas or any deeper sadhanas? Did I start any new initiative and encourage more people, support more people through that? What is my energy and enthusiasm about life? Or do we live, we, live, we take life for granted, we take people for granted? In our relationships also, so many times what happens, relationships become stale. Then they have to go to some psychiatrist. <clears throat> then they will say that you should have relationship goals. And you should do something new together and infuse life into your relationship, all that. Why? Because it's very easy that mind slips into tamas. So to keep it active, to keep it enthusiastic. And don't expect that people around will be enthusiastic, so I will also be. It is our responsibility. Most of the times if we see people are... Life is taken for granted only. The mundane duties of life or the work of life or routine of life only takes away all the energy. But this mindset if one has that anything that I'm doing, suppose I'm doing exercise, something is to do in a routine way, something is to put my heart and soul into it and do it nicely. Bring some creativity into it, innovation into it. Even exercise when we do, people say that, you know, if you do the same routine, Body gets used to it, then you can't lose weight or flexibility. So you want to lose weight or build stamina or improve flexibility, then something new has to happen. It can't be the same thing only. In sadhana also mind can go deep. So tell me one thing, boredom is because of lack of options, exciting options or because of something else? Why does somebody get bored? Something exciting, something. Hmm? The mind is unable to uh, derive the feel the excitement and uh, derive pleasure out of whatever experiences. Enjoy the moment. So it is not able to, but that's the point. Why it is not able to? That's no question. Because is it because the options are not available, or is there some other reason for it? No, no I am not thinking of different options. Mind is not thinking for different options. Monotonous. That's why I'm asking, what brings monotony? Things by themselves are monotonous or there is another reason for monotony? You don't know the excitement or joy when you're doing that activity. So you, by your mind forces yourself to just do the same activity. You don't want to derive things. Okay, one doesn't want to derive, but why? That's the question. It's the same pattern of life. Oh, that's called monotony. No, my question is why is there monotony? The man is constantly feeling something every second. It's not at peace. No, oh, so that thinking something every second is not a problem. No, monotony comes because of something else. So it's a bit yeah. Mind, is yeah. Trying to do this. mind is not trying to do. Okay. One is a creature of habit. That's what it is, monotony and all. Never take any risk. To go beyond what is thinking. Ah, these two are more important points. See, one point is I am not applying my mind. Anything becomes mechanical, monotonous when mind's application is not there. Which means my mind is not where I am. My mind is somewhere else. Like she said, it is thinking something, something. So it is not where. So Gurudev needs to say what? Bring your mind where your hands are. Exercise. Suppose you have to walk 5 kilometers. Every day, suppose you have a routine, you walk 5 kilometers. That walking 5 kilometers 
can become monotonous. Why? Because I don't pay attention to it. And to escape then that monotony, I will put on some <laughs> air pods, ear pods, listen to some music and then walk or jog. Why? Otherwise it is boring. That means the mind is not paying attention to walking, it's paying attention to something else which it is finding more exciting. That is how many times we train. I'm not saying don't listen to music. I'm only saying, see the boredom comes not because of a certain routine pattern. Boredom comes actually because there is no attention being paid. If I pay attention, boredom will not come. I can do the same thing with great energy, enthusiasm, then I can be more creative about it also. I can learn many things, observe many things about body, about breath, about muscles, about many things can happen. But one doesn't pay enough attention. And one distracts the mind somewhere else. That is one. Second, we don't break out of our comfort zone. We are creatures of comfort. We like comfort. Once we are creatures of comfort, we don't want to break, then combine. So if you combine both this, I don't want to break out of comfort and I don't pay attention. Now what will happen? Go not and you will set it. It is a state of mind, correct. It has to be changed by proper application of the mind. If someone says, you know, this work doesn't require this full application of my mind, <laughs> suppose driving. Now think about it. One becomes so adept in driving and then one says, I will talk, I will listen, I will talk on phone and all that. But is that not a cause of danger? Many things like that. Cutting vegetables. One may be very expert in that. So then one says, okay, okay this is a mechanical thing I have to do. So no paying attention to that. It is, in spiritual life, this becomes a big obstacle as we progress. Inattention is what causes our bondage. That is mrityu, that is death. Inattention is death. Because that inattention only brings delusion. That's why Upanishads say, Moha eva maha mrityu. Delusion is death. When I don't pay attention, inalertness is death. That's why Gurudev used to say that alert and vigilant living is the price you pay for freedom. <laughs> and alert living is a sadhana by itself. How to live consciously, how to live alert, how to live moment by moment with full awareness. Whatever I'm doing, I do it with full attention and awareness. My, I may not absorb my mind fully into it. That's all right. <laughs> but whatever application that task requires, that much my mind is there and I am not allowing the mind to do anything else. This multitasking should not happen. One thing here and you know one part of the mind here and another part somewhere else. Sadhana is to integrate that only. One part somewhere else and one part here. While doing Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, where the mind goes. Kailas, we have to go, Swamiji. <laughs> Covid ke pehle we had planned. Then it did not happen. Now China is not giving permission. I think these China fellows are terrible. They allow everybody else to do. Um, people from abroad, they are going to Kailas. Indians are not going. I think Modi is responsible for that. What are you doing, Japa? <laughs> Om Namah Shivaya. <laughs> when somewhere, next year elections are coming. I don't know if this government should come, not come. I don't know what is happening. Jab ka kar rahe, om namah ka. Mind has gone wherever. Because we have trained it like that. While driving somewhere else it is, talking on the phone, while eating food, I am watching the television. This goes on. This is mrityu. Every moment I am dying like this only. And slowly, slowly when the inattention becomes a habit, then to pay attention becomes so difficult. Then we say, this person is hyperactive. One of the reasons is the ability to focus and pay attention is not there. You know, in psychology, they say this has executive control, the ability to focus the mind on one, then everything else the mind will exclude. 
that is how it will be able to absorb many things if the mind does not have the capacity to exclude other things its ability to focus absorb becomes much lesser and that's why one should not encourage multitasking pay full attention to what work is being done relationship will improve productivity will improve spiritual sadhana will improve happiness will improve enjoyment will improve suppose you are eating ice cream you wanted to eat ice cream ice cream ice cream and you prepared so much for it and then you finally went and you are eating that ice cream how long is the mind with that ice cream not even few seconds one or two times i have eaten i feel very happy after that and then the mind has gone somewhere else that's how we are training the mind that's why we feel that even after we get what we want we are still not happy because my mind was not there at that time you know one great quality of gurudev was like that he was where he will be you now he will be fully there so if he is talking to somebody he may spend only 5 minutes with that person but that person will feel fully connected to gurudev gurudev will be connected to that person so that person feels very happy and satisfied and that apply to him for everything if he gets angry he will get angry in such a way that opposite person will shiver but in 5 minutes that anger when it is over it is issue based anger it's finished khatam they it doesn't spill over here only he fired one brahmachari who had come as soon as his car came he got down from the car and that person prostrated him one left right and center he gave it to him or some mistake he had done terrible mistake he had done he gave it back next moment there is a small child who is coming to touch his feet and gurudev looks at him and embraces him and is playing with him his whole anger everything has disappeared in a second and with the same person also he meets after a few moments he is not carrying that anger on that issue what had to be done he finished it over so that is the ability to be here and now when we are not here and now we are dead to the here and now that is called mrityu and when we are dead to here and now then all delusions happen because if i can't see what is in the now that is why the delusions happen if our mind is fully in the present we will realize we are sachidananda swarup atma only our mind is not in the present so we have the delusion i am this body i am this jiva and we go life after life so one mrityu is <laughs> what is the first mrityu tamoguna is the first mrityu second is lack of energy enthusiasm initiative learning that is second mrityu third mrityu is in alertness in mrityu no not paying attention not being in the present that is mrityu fourth mrityu is delusion wrong harboring wrong notions na is death so when we know what is harmful but we continue to encourage that pattern of thinking and we know what is right but we don't engage in that and that is mrityu like we know what is good food what is healthy for us we don't eat unhealthy stuff we go on eating then what will happen sickness disease will happen or not same way we know that many things are not good for us maybe drinking smoking alcohol gossip you know procrastination so many things some what we call peer pressure we come under and we sometimes engage in many of these keeping up till late night or you know not doing exercise many things we know but we don't follow that so not doing what is right and what is beneficial what is my duty and doing something which is harmful and which is not my duty also that is the cause of that is called death duryodhan says that or not जानामि धर्मम न च मे प्रवृत्ति जानामि अधर्मम न च मे निवृत्ति आई नो व्हाट इज धर्म व्हाट इज राइट बट आई कांट एंगेज इन इट एंड आई नो व्हाट इज रॉन्ग बट आई कांट रेजिस्ट दैट इज दैट नॉट डेथ धर्म डाइड इन अस ना देन वी आर नॉट एबल टू लिव 
we are not able to live to our potential. Dhritarashtra also knew what he is doing is wrong, but he could not. Dhritarashtra knew. <coughs> Duryodhan also knew. Arjun came under the influence of his attachments, but luckily he surrendered to Bhagavan. He said, please instruct me, I am confused. And he was ready to follow the instruction. So that's the journey. From Ritya to Amrit, the journey is when I'm ready to follow instructions, when I'm ready to drop my attachment, I'm ready to examine. Otherwise, I know what is right, I don't follow. And when Arjun asked that question to Bhagavan, that what is it that makes a person commit sin? In the third chapter, he asked that question. That, what is that? Balad even Niyojita. It, it forces us to do compromise. So compromise is death. <clears throat> that Anichanna Pivashneya Baladeva Niyojitha. I don't want to do it. It's not that I want to do it. But Papam Charati Purushaha. Why does a person uh, act in a sinful way? Knowingly. But what is that force which compels him? There Bhagavan says, Rajoguna Samudhavaha, Kama Esha, Krodha Esha, Rajoguna Samudhava. It is desire and, and anger born out of attachment, Rajoguna. That will not allow the person to live in a dharmic way. So we pray to Bhagavan that, oh Bhagavan, please help me to move from this mrityu, from attachment to detachment. Detachment is immortality. Attachment is sorrow, death. Some of you have heard me before, you know these formulas. I keep giving formulas for memory aid. Sure formula for sorrow. You can apply. You want to become miserable? Apply this formula. If the formula does not work, money back guarantee. <laughs> what is the formula? Anybody can guess what is the formula? Attachment. Attachment. That is definitely there, one part of it. Insistence plus resistance is equal to sorrow. In that insistence is attachment. Insistence that this has to be like this only. And in that what my ego is saying, I insist on that. Insistence means a psychological dependence. Especially if something which is wrong, mind is very fixated on that. The Trashtra should have given the kingdom, but he didn't. And Duryodhan said, not even the kingdom occupied by a pin. I will give without war. <clears throat> so he, fought, he imposed the battle on the Pandavas. So insistence, sure sign of sorrow. And resistance, that I don't accept what life brings. Why this happened to me? This should not have happened. I did so much. Still this person behaved like this with me. Sometimes difficult times do come. People feel that I did nothing wrong. I didn't even kill a mosquito, but still I got this suffering. Why did this happen to me? Natural to think like that, but somewhere one has to accept that nothing happens randomly. It is some cause because of which this effect has come. So if somebody wants to be miserable, then this is a sure sort, uh, formula. Insistence plus resistance. And what is the formula for happiness? Acceptance plus independence. Simple. I learn to accept life as it comes. I do my best and then leave the rest and accept life, what it brings. And learn to become independent. Dependency brings sorrow. Sarvam paravasham dukham. Atma vasham eva sukham. Independence brings freedom. Dependence psychologically is misery. So this is death. So free moving from attachment to detachment, moving from this state of compromise to conviction, that is Mrityorma Amritam Dhammaya. Moving from wrong notions to right thinking. 
when i know that exercise is good for me then i should engage in that and when i know that avoiding exercise or living a more sedentary life is not good for me then i should avoid that then if that clarity is there many times the clarity is not there in our mind we have wrong notion that is called delusion if we drink cigarette we are cool there is nothing cool about it but the way it is portrayed is like that if you have sorrow what should you do drink alcohol why because it will kill the brain cells you will forget the sorrow so you have two problems now your brain cells are getting killed you can't think and you are already existing on sorrow and you won't find solution for it what delusion it is and many people who do all this they apply they they think that they are very scientific logical rational swami ji i don't believe in god i believe in science then why are you drinking alcohol keep that out of science <laughs> science don't apply there you can't apply science everywhere people think like that they, they if you are scientific you apply science properly you know live a scientific life no 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 conveniently where required apply science where required uh, don't apply science that doesn't work so one has to think what are the wrong notions in my head forgiveness if i engage in people will take me for a ride so i will never forgive i am not saying we should always forgive there are some things we no need to forgive and it should be there in our collective memory it should be there as a country we have forgotten so many things atrocities that have happened to us not that we have forgotten by time we have become apathetic towards it apathy is there towards it and we have forgotten and wrong notions of secularism and pseudo secularism and all that has been fed into our head and we have forgotten what all sacrifices and troubles our ancestors have gone through and by the way deepavali we are supposed to remember our ancestors but that that too we have fully forgotten only deepavali has become associated with what only some enjoyment celebration new movie release traveling outside vacation chutti some lighting of lamps and now there are deluded fools who say don't even give me gifts on deepavali we environment conscious all the problems come to people only on hindu festivals yeah. crackers you should not burn gifts you should not give then they will say don't light the lamps also after some time so much oil is getting wasted and they do birthday parties they do this now world cup will happen now whoever will win after that will they not burst crackers heavy bursting of crackers will happen new year and none of their dogs have any problem at that time <laughs> their dogs are tuned to kartik mass <laughs> crackers bursting in kartik mass creates all frenzy in these dogs all oh, crazy so we have forgotten many things and continuous hindu bashing keeps happening and we also keep accepting keep accepting so some of those we should not forget that what our people have gone through if in our family somebody has been subjected to terrible kind of torture will we forget it may have been also there in our family but we don't know 100% there will be people in even in our family some of the ancestors would have gone through difficulties for a kind of thousand years of slavery and struggle that we have gone through it just that we have forgotten so certain things we need not forgive we need not forget and we need to ensure that we revive certain traditions back but in individual life many times we hold on to some grudge for such a long time and the sad part is while living we have such grudge towards that person and after that person has dropped the body in the shock about that person we say what a nice person he was and he was so kind and you know now i miss this person are while that person was living you didn't want to look at the person's face no? we don't want to talk selectively you will not invite that person also for a particular program and then when the person has died all goodness starts manifesting from you that is all delusion that is called mrityu so mrityurma amritam gamaya has all these different aspects 
then finally one comes if all this mind becomes clear with it becomes enthusiastic it uh, starts paying attention it removes wrong notions it stops dropping i mean stops uh, being attached drops yes. these attachments then that mind is ready for the final leap from rityu to amrit meaning from for the final realization that body is going to die that which is born has to die that's the point there that which is born has to die that which is not born never dies jatasya hi dhruvam mrityu dhruvam janma pratasya cha that which is born will die and that which is dying will be again born so if you actually think about it what is a wonder you know is life a wonder or death a wonder i don't say both okay <laughs> that way both are wonder only but if between the two you have to think which is a wonder life is a wonder or death life life pakka not death why death is certain so death is certain i am not asking what is uncertain i am asking wonder Like we are not because we are seeing everything. In spite of that, we are not able to apply everything. So why? Ah, no, those reasons are there for it, no? Because we don't know what is after death. At ah, least so in life, we and we know how. So then, life. That's why I should think that death is a wonder because I don't know what is after that. Life is perceptible, no? Is is life not more easy to perceive? You know what is here. you know you can walk on the earth you know gravity is there you know people are there you know everything right so many things as we learn as we grow we know many things but we don't know anything about life or death na no? and after life what will happen at death we don't know after death life exists or not that also we have doubt about if life exists in which form that also we don't know is there heaven and hell really that also we don't know and if this body is gone then will i get another body that also we don't know and is it not more that like people imagine so many more things because one doesn't know so should death not be a bigger wonder no i'm giving you logical answer still no <laughs> then you convince me why is life greater wonder than death because with the experience you can orchestrate the way you want to whereas in death we don't know how to orchestrate it's all death. exactly which is why death is a wonder is what i am saying in life you have purushat ability so you can change many things and you will accept what you can't change and so there is cause and effect functioning here but death may there is no control think Okay, death is a certainty. How can we avoid death? It's a wonder because I one doesn't know now what happens at that point in time. What is true? What is afraid that only will happen? That is true. What is afraid will happen in life also. Exactly. That is why death is a wonder. Now because death you can't change. Life you can change. <laughs> See, actually, life is a wonder. There is no doubt. Why? because the possibilities of dying and possibilities of death are countless anything any moment can happen and we can die no so many bacteria viruses all these things are there all around us we are still surviving no no guarantee for that when you will die we don't know correct we don't know about that but every moment in life is a struggle against death or not every moment death is there opportunities of body getting dropped are there how many people have died earlier with so many kind of diseases for which today we have enough cure so we are living today life expectancy also has increased quite a bit right our scriptures say that life is a greater wonder than death why you know so give they give a nice example suppose there is a balloon and the balloon has a hole will the air remain in that balloon 
No, it will leak out, right? Nine holes are there in this body. And this pranavayu remains in this body. It does not leave. Till karma does not get exhausted, this body will be alive. You do anything, that body will not drop. You People want to do suicide, but they are not able to do. So many are, people are there who attempt also, but the body will not drop because their karma is not over. And we saw just now in Navaratri, 13-year-old boy, 17-year-old boy getting heart attack and died. There may be some reasons externally one may give, but the fact is karma got over. So what is holding the breath inside this body that in spite of seven holes being there, this body is alive. Life is a big wonder. No doubt death is also a great wonder. But between life and death, life is a bigger wonder because every single moment life, you have to fight with death to live. Death doesn't have to fight with life. Life has to fight with death. Death comes once and finishes and gone. That's the death of the body. So, Mrityorma Amritam Gamaya means to understand that this life is very precious. And so the prayer is, I don't want to be identified with this which is perishable. Another question, body is dead or alive by itself? Pakka. By itself it is dead. Wow, give him one round of applause. But the young boy, he knows Atma is there. That is what keeps this body alive. When this Jivatma leaves this body, this body will again come back to its natural state. So now you answer that body is dead, right? Now tell me who dies. At death, who dies? Body dies. Body is already dead. That's what you said, no? Association. Association dies. Uh, with the gross body. Association with the gross body dies. Who, who dies? Nobody dies. Nobody dies. Then what is that which we grieve for? Delusion. We grieve for our attachments and delusion only. Actually no one dies. Gurudev used to say, you know, very loudly in the Gita lectures, Everybody dies, but no one dies. And people will wake up suddenly who are... <laughs> if they are asleep, no, they'll wake up. What happened? Everybody dies and no one dies. What happened? First of all, Gurudev's lecture, you can't sleep. <laughs> if you sleep, that means you must be very exhausted. Or sometimes in scripture, they say this person has done Papa Karma so that he in satsang is not able to <laughs> listen. He's sleeping in satsang also. Because that required Satpaguna is not there to absorb knowledge, so went off to sleep. So, he used to say, everybody dies, but no one dies. Um, three, four times loudly he will say, and then he will explain. Everybody dies, no one dies. The one truth in us doesn't die. And even that body is actually by itself dead only. Jivatma continues or not after this body is dropped. At least we believe that in our Sanatana Dharma, we believe in reincarnation. That's why don't ever write R-I-P. First of all, that expression itself is terrible. If you want to write that also, please write full form. No? Rest in peace. Itna kya urgency hai ki rip, rip likhna padta hai apko. Rip this fellow, rip that fellow. He is already dead, Baba. At least write rest in peace. No, rip. You know, you, first when this expression came, no, I used to wonder. First it came when I saw for Nelson Mandela, you know. When Nelson Mandela passed away, suddenly I was seeing on Facebook, Rip Mandela, Rip Mandela. I said, what did Mandela do? Why are people trying to rip him apart? But I am thinking that it's some controversy, you know. So he was such a nice, noble man. And what, what did he do now? Then I understood, oh, I saw the news, oh, he has passed on, you know. So then I said, why are they writing rip? And they said, rip means rest in peace. I said, this is too much now. 
everything we are becoming making in short form. You know, BRB means be right back. Right? Like that they say, you know, huh? BTW, by the way. BTW, by the way. See, now they ask them, they will know. <laughs> All, so many short forms, you know. <laughs> WIIFM means what? What's in it for me? What's in it for me? See? <laughs> WIIFM. <clears throat> LOL means what? Laugh out loud. It means laugh out loud, but some people think it is lots of love. Yeah. yeah. Some mother wrote LOL, and so the so child started making fun of her. When mother is thinking it is lots of love, and the child is thinking LOL means uh, laugh out loud. So, all kinds of things, you know. So, we believe in reincarnation that Jiva exists. Does Atma die? No. Infinite consciousness doesn't die. Jiva has not died. Body by itself is already dead. So, Mara come. Koi nahi Mara. That is what Vedan says. And that if we realize ki I am not this body, body by itself is Jadavastu. Do I want to call myself a product of this food that I eat? Yes. Who are you? I am Idli Swamiji. <laughs> Essentially, that's what it means, no? This is idli, this is vada, this is dosa. <laughs> and if I'm calling myself this, then what am I saying? Who are you? Idli, vada, dosa. What is this? And now make up for idli, vada and dosa. <laughs> it's terrible, no? Mrityorma, Amritam, Game identify with the body and we live in the body as the body. Gurudev used to say that those who live in the body as the body are the Virochana cult. Virochana cult means Asuras. Asuras are not those who don't believe in God. Asuras know God exists. Asuras do tapasya and get boon from God. Asuras are those who have deep body identification. From that standpoint, we all are Asuras only. The moment we see Asura, we think that there is some two horns, black face, red tongue, long teeth. A stout person having one gada and when he walks then everything shakes Are bhai, that is not a depiction of asura asura means who does not know the truth and is identified with the body and so mrityorma amritam gamaya means to understand what is death change is death that is one aspect and that death of the body is going to happen Am I that body is a point. I am not this body, which is what Vedanta is trying to tell us again and again and again. And Deepavali is to light that lamp of self-knowledge in us. The darkness of ignorance has to be dispelled. The knowledge of the truth has to come into our heart that we contemplate. I am not this jiva. So I am not this body. I am not the jiva. I am that infinite consciousness, Sachidananda Swarup, Atma, that is me, that is Amritam Gamaya. Till I don't realize that, what will happen? The cycle of birth and death will go on. Do I have to become the Atma? No. I already am that. I only have to recognize that. That is all has to be done. And just imagine to recognize that, how much time it is taking. Why? Because we have lived in ignorance for so long and developed so many attachments, identifications, desires. Those have to be reduced. Vasana pressure has to be reduced. And hence, the whole sadhana is that. To accept, yes, there is change. If I have detachment, I accept change as it happens. Otherwise, change brings so much sorrow because I am attached. By itself, change can't bring sorrow. Sorrow comes, why? Because... I am attached to some way of thinking and now that has changed. Some way of being, action, situation. You know, how much and nowadays do things change so fast? What the world was before COVID and what the world is after COVID? What a vast change or not? In every aspect. Work from home. Whoever thought that work from home will be there. Suddenly so many things have changed. So many people are very happy to do satsang from their house. Offline, some of you are sitting here. 
many people online it has brought convenience also because when one can't travel one can listen at least satsang is there <coughs> but it has other side effects also ekagrata is not there some people may have but many people don't <coughs> while cooking brahma vidya is being heard <laughs> and then some work is happening somebody is coming going then suddenly somebody else will come and say please do this for me so all that change keeps happening in us outside us everywhere if i say mrityurma amritam gamaya means whatever changes are happening how quickly i am able to adapt accept not that every change has to be accepted some change we need not accept which is not for the good but the point is this journey is of that detachment mrityu means that i don't accept change death of the body may happen at one point in time but is it not that every single moment we are dying only so the journey is mrityu from mrityu to mrityu that's a natural journey which is anyway happening so many cells are dying in the body so many thoughts are dying in the mind every minute mrityu is playing its play it is that is doing its dance a seeker has to consciously pray for what from mrityu to amrit that's the prayer saying bhagwan please help me to rise above this change about this body about this jiva bhav about my attachments and realize that immortal nature and what will happen if i become immortal swami ji what will happen after i realize the truth because it should be worth na no? w i i f m what's in it for me if i leave all these pleasures of the world and renounce also and live in detachment and suppose i do sadhana then what will i get very good i will not be there and the question will not be there simple when man went to the temple and he said bhagwan i want peace bhagwan said remove i remove want you have peace <laughs> it's like that i will not be there that question only will not be there that's the state of fulfillment mrityurma amritam gamaya and when there is fulfillment then there is no craving there is no desire then there is no rebirth also that state of fulfillment is what one is praying for that please light this lamp of knowledge stop this cycle of birth and death that vairagya has to come so before the lamp of self knowledge is lit lamp of vairagya has to be lit in our heart how will lamp of vairagya be lit through flame of vivek you know that matchstick of vivek and what will strike that matchstick that matchbox is satsang satsang you strike the matchstick it will produce that flame and light the wick of the mind with that that is why ragya satsang is sangharsh you know you have to strike in one mahatma used to say this that you know if you do satsang satsang is like playing a boxing match if you do boxing what will happen some little bit you will bleed or not <laughs> you may break your nose may break many things bleeding also may happen so is mahatma used to say that if you do satsang and you don't bleed that means you are not participating in the satsang swami ji we thought the auspicious occasion we came here <laughs> now we are scared because will you beat us will we bleed now <laughs> bleeding means what knock na knock after knock shastra will give to our delusion start first time one comes to vedant one definitely will think that this man who is talking or this woman who is talking is gone nuts how can they say we are not this body how can they say the world is illusory how can they say that happiness is not in the world outside definitely something wrong with these people anybody who comes to vedant for the first time will think that because the deep conditioning is like that no that we have been taught now suddenly you are being told exactly opposite you are not finite you are infinite 
who told us this when we were children we were told you are this only you have this only and so many times our potential was put down finite potential only was not encouraged forget infinity one boy he said till i was 10 years old i thought my name was stupid <laughs> because everybody kept calling him hey stupid don't do this hey stupid don't do that <laughs> so nobody encourages our infinite potential so when we come to satsang it is like a boxing match and satsang you know beyond a lecture if you read vedant if you study any of the you know listen to any audio video podcast so many methods are there now when we listen then it will clash with our wrong notions how much am i able to let go of my wrong notions and take up the right one and transform my knowledge into conviction that is our journey from vritti to amrit otherwise what we saw earlier we know many things but we are not convinced by them and sometimes we say i am intellectually convinced but i am not able to apply that is a myth it is not possible if i am intellectually fully convinced i will apply in life it is somewhere my conviction is not strong enough i am maybe 10 20% convinced and why am i not fully convinced either i have not thought properly or i am holding on to some attachment i know sugar white sugar is bad for me i don't need to eat it and you know diabetes is there some people may have that but attachment to that sugar and then we say anyway we have to die swami <laughs> why don't we die sweetly <laughs> what will happen by not eating sweets body is anyway going to die my die eating sweets why should we prevent our mind from doing that <laughs> so the justification will be there so it's the convictions when they are not proper then that is why we don't live it the conviction when it becomes 100% we will definitely live we live like that or not we are 100% convinced that happiness is in the world outside so we happily run behind it no matter how much vedant says in satsang happiness is inside outside satsang happiness is outside <laughs> we do the dharma of that place where we are inside satsang inside outside satsang outside so we are convinced with that so we live like that that reversal doesn't happen how do great masters transform if you look at their lives they transform because of their thought process has changed and thought process has changed means drop the old take up the new knowledge assimilate it make it one's nature that is application you know gurudev used to smoke cigarette and he was a he used to smoke and he was studying with tapon maharaj in this uh, uttarkashi uska battery khatam ho gaya leave it so in uttarkashi he used to study and tapon maharaj is a very strict teacher but still gurudev would find his way go out get his cigarette and he'll smoke he is studying he is learning he is a sanyasi also he took sanyas but he was still smoking some attachment was there so some people went and told tapon maharaj ke re chinmay is smoking and you know what tapon maharaj said he said i am concerned more about his inner fire not the outer smoke tapon maharaj did not tell gurudev or shout at him or scold him or do anything because he knew that the conviction has to still come and he worked on that as gurudev became more and more clearer about i am not this body and i am not this jeeva etc that clarity came more and more that habit dropped by itself because he was ready to accept the knowledge reflect upon it change his convictions so it happens like that darkness if it has to go what do we have to do bring light we just have to bring light no 
this is one very powerful aspect in sadhana also we struggle with negativities fight with them but what we need to do is bring the opposite of it bring the light if i am struggling with lust what do i have to do bring love into life if i am struggling with jealousy what do i have to do bring admiration into life if i am struggling with anger what do i have to do bring empathy and compassion into life i don't have to fight the negativity because what i fight will become stronger we can't say don't be angry don't be angry and some people say i told you not to be angry <laughs> very good how is that going to work so we have to bring that opposite that is a sadhana so mrityorma amritam gamaya if we go on contemplating on amrit what is mort immortality how am i immortal what is my true nature then automatically we will drop attachment to the body to the jiva bhav but that allow that we have to allow it to happen that has to happen consciously that is called sadhana that is called satsang and that's why satsang will what will happen in satsang one will bleed so we pray today that bhagwan please let our mind bleed that is the bali we have to offer to bhagwan bali of what of our wrong notions of our attachments of delusion of ignorance of being in comfort zone offer all that <laughs> and how bringing the light of knowledge so we will chant 11 times mrityorma amritam gamaya and pray to bhagwan that please make this journey happen that before we drop this body we should realize the truth that i am that immortal absolute consciousness alone <clears throat> om mrityorma amritam gamaya 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 Om Rityorma Anirutam Gamaya Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om बोलिए श्री सदगुरुनाथ महाराज की जय ओके हरिओम एवरीवन